Dude, I'm so bored. What do you want to do today? Well, you know what they say about two young men left alone in a room together. They play D&D! &D! Dude, let's play it! Yeah! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first episode of the Dude Let's Play It podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Ben! Whoa! 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 The Dude Let's Play It gang is finally OMG. Back. The boys are back in town. The band is back together. Hell yeah, man. Time for the reunion tour. We're going to hit like all the small stadiums and all the small towns. That way we don't attract a big crowd. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I've never been to a concert. Damn. I mean, it's okay. I don't like going to concerts. I don't like crowds. I don't like <laughs> concerts either. I just, like, I used to work with a guy over uh, in the game store, right? Mm -hmm. I used to work at a game store for folks who don't know that. Uh, so the guy was telling me, like, yeah, you just go to, like, a, a metal concert or something. You get high, and you just fight people. <laughs> and I'm like, why would I do that? Yeah. It doesn't... I can just go and get high at home <laughs> and be safe. Like, Damn. Anyway, <laughs> I so, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know about all that. I don't know about about getting high at all. I don't know about fighting people either. Jeez, dude. I mean, that, like, it, like I used to do judo, right? Yeah, yeah. Like that's one we, thing. We used to do judo. Yeah, together. That's right, you did do judo. Yeah, remember? We used to do judo. We and we never got to face each other either. Well, it's because I broke my shoulder. <laughs> I broke oh, my, I broke my collarbone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in a sling for like six months. Damn. <laughs> Damn, that was crazy. Well, oh, man. I, I don't remember why I stopped. I think, no, I, I didn't do wrestling until like the two years later or something. So oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know what. I just stopped. I don't know. Who knows, man? All in the past. Today we focus on the future. The future. The future being a D and D campaign featuring the OG Dude Let's Play It crew. Hell yeah. O M G. We got the cameras. We got the microphones. We got the we got the headsets. We have headsets this time. Like it's. Not, I can't believe we have headsets can in you, this. Ladies and gentlemen, you have no idea. Okay, this is fun too. Talking into a camera, I can do that now. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we have headsets. Now, what would make this fun, right? Is if we had like a little microphone that shoots out through the side there, right? Yeah. That way, that way we pretend we're like jet fighters or something like that. Like, <laughs> all right, this is Alpha One going in for a straight run. Yeah. <laughs> I whenever I'm at the concerts, I always make like a bad joke that no one else understands, and it's like copy gold leader. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. I there, there's a few there's a few other Star Wars quotes that I'll make here and there, <laughs> but like no one ever catches them, and I'm, I'm waiting for the day that like because there's different like volunteers and stuff right, right. that that end up doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm always like waiting for the day. I'm like, someone please get it today. And it's just never happened. It's just disappointing, honestly. Like, we were talking to that one guy. What's his name? Joe? Joey. Joey? Yeah. So, like, he's a nerd. Why wouldn't he understand what Star Wars is? Like, I, maybe he maybe he understood, but maybe he was just like... He didn't want to encourage you? Yeah. He's, 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 he's like... He's got to uh, maintain his reputation. <laughs> he's like, this guy's drowning right now. Uh, it's not my place to save him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Well, I think that's pretty good for an opening. You want to get right into it? Then? Yeah, let's let's get right into All this right. this campaign. So, ladies and gentlemen, we this is episode one of our new D and D campaign featuring the Dude Let's Play It crew. I already said that, didn't I? Ah, whatever. <laughs> so, let's start off with just a quick introduction of your character. Okay. So, my character, his name is Salazar Spindle. Uh, he's a monk. Uh, he used to be a pirate. Used to be a pirate. Okay. And just so everybody knows, we've we've have played a campaign, multiple campaigns with mm -hmm. this same character before. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there there are probably going to be a lot of like inside jokes and whatnot. Just go along with it, you know. If you hear us laughing, just laugh with us. Yeah. Laughing is contagious. We'll 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 all enjoy uh, Salazar Spindle together. Oh yes, he is a he's a great zany character. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I always just think of the the Duff or the the buff, the Simpsons beer man. Oh, the the Duff beer man. Yes, I knew. Yeah. I I I thought it was Duff. I I don't. Yeah, know. it is Duff. Okay. I think the Kool Aid Man personally. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. So, so um, so let's shall we, here. Shall we jump right into it then? Let's do it. All right. Let's so, 
let's let's set the scene here for example so salazar has he's how old is salazar um i want to say that i put him as my age yeah he's 25 because in our old in our old things i put him as my age he was like 18 or 19 or something so so good old salazar there he's he's been around the block a couple of times you know not like super old but like he's an adult so he knows that you know you are living in a a world that is mostly inhabited by ocean Uh, you live in a particular area of the world called the ben isles is a series of aisles kind of collected together. Yes, I call it the Ben Isles, Ben. I, I came up with the name when I was like 12, and I just ran with it. The Ben so, Isles. The Ben Isles, spelled B-E-N apostrophe N. <laughs> yes. Nice. Yes. So the Ben Isles are just kind of a collection of relatively close, collected together islands. Uh, each island kind of has its own little mystery to it. They've got their own little settlements and adventures to be had. Sweet. Uh, in between them, it's like maybe a day's or two's worth of travel by sea. Salazar, being a a former pirate turned uh, monk, he's he's been to a few of these islands, but some of them might still be a mystery to him. So let me reference my my little map here. In fact, I can show this to the world. That is a hand drawn map of the Ben Isles. There. <laughs> yes. Looks so, good. Yeah. So you will be starting your adventure. Get where I had you going. I think. Where was it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think. So I think it was this small island. So as you see at the top there, the small island underneath the one that says the Ben Village. Uh, the does it say Thun Thunder's nope. Bane? Up at the top of the uh, the map there. Kind of the center. Oh, it's it's the island that's next to the, that's like adjacent to Ben's village. Yeah, that small island right next to it there. So, yeah, see. that that map is kind of old, so I I gotta update it with the, uh, the actual. Where, right? Can you? Can right you there. It? It's hard to do it like reverse. Ah, I see. Gosh, but I'm still teeny, okay. teeny teeny tiny island. Um, right I I still gotta name the island and whatnot because, <laughs> whatever. It's like but. it's like the Philippines. I'm pretty sure the Philippines they have so many islands that there's like islands that are still like yet to be yeah named. Yeah. But um, on this particular tiny island is a village called the Port of Saint Royal. Nice. Yes. Um, so you have heard through your various adventures that the Port of Saint Royal uh, holds has been holding a festival in these past recent years. So the town itself is known for its crab fishing industry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, started up about maybe a decade or so ago, and it's been a booming industry ever since. And to celebrate, the town is putting on a fa- has started putting on a fancy festival in recent years. And you've heard that, oh, this festival's pretty happening, pretty popping, right? Mm-hmm. Attracts people from all over the local islands and whatnot. So yeah. should be a pretty nice crowd, should be a fun time. And you... Uh, you know, weary from your previous adventures, could use a, a nice a nice vacation. So you're making your way there. Um, we'll start you just a little ways outside of the town. So as you're making your way into the town, you're passing by, like, different campsites and what. You see one camp kind of has, like, you know, acrobats and jugglers and whatnot. Another one has, like, an acting trope or something like that. And then dotted amongst them and whatnot are just, like, regular tents and whatnot of just travelers who came for the festival and whatnot yeah so um as you're walking by you hear a couple of uh villagers kind of just talk to themselves and like oh did you hear about the did you hear about the cult that had in this town like oh yeah i did like they're kind of a funny line they're like worship crabs or something like that and they're kind of walking away and whatnot and then you see off uh kind of onto the side of a uh a road there's kind of like a message board right and uh, as you walk up to it, you notice there's a help wanted sign. Uh, any volunteers report to the mayor of the port of St. Royale. Okay. So I guess Salazar seeing this, mm-hmm. uh, I'll just start talking to Salazar. Um, you are Salazar. I, right, but I'm just going to... Oh, you're like talking to yourself. Well, yeah, like I'm just saying like I'm going to start oh, oh, okay, speaking okay. as like... Okay, okay. Hmm. This is interesting. Maybe I'll, I'll look into this and see if I can get some some 
gold coinage out of all this. So you make your way to the town? Sorry, I'm yep. trying to unlock my phone here. Yep. Okay, so, uh, and I assume you, you're interested in the, the job there? The yes, job? I am interested in the job. Okay. I'm interested in anything uh, that'll make me some cash. Give it a bit of... R that, right now. Coinage. Yeah. Okay. I'm a little bit low on funds. I only have 10 gold coins. Fair enough. So as you, you're you making your way towards the town, it's it's not like a particularly big town, but it's not really small either. Yeah. And you notice kind of on the periphery of the town, they're kind of like setting up new buildings and whatnot that are still in, under construction. So like it's it's going pretty good in this town economically wise. This crab industry has been doing pretty good for them. Yeah. And uh, you notice kind of in the like the center of town you see from like you're standing on like a hilltop or something like that you can see like oh there's like a village square or something and then you see a, a slightly taller building um that is probably a good indication that that's the the town hall where you might find the mayor okay so i guess um my character seeing this decides that he's gonna go towards the town hall to see if he can hall. learn more information about this this potential job okay so you make your way in town, and it's a pretty bustling place. You know, you got people setting up stalls here and there. You got, you know, different, you know, like baker and butcher and whatnot. They got lines going out the door, basically. It's the happening place. Like, this is going to be fun. Um, make your way to the uh, the city hall and make your way inside. And the, there's a secretary kind of sitting at a desk at the front there. Like, hello, can I help you? <laughs> there's going to be a lot of weird voices. Oh, no. Yeah. I I remember that voice specifically from some of our other playthroughs. Okay, okay. Yeah. No, it's okay. Like I I'm know, just saying. I'm trying to trying to do that um what that secretary person from the Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to be the secretary lady? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's Hello, a, can I help you? <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> okay. Um uh yes, miss. Uh I'm here for the And she kind of looks up at your Nine foot tall ass. Oh. I'm here for the potential uh, job that was posted here. Uh, oh, okay. I, uh, I need some gold coinage. Understand. I need it very soon. Cool. Uh, just go go up the stairs to the right. The mayor will be expecting you. Okay. All right. I'll do that. <laughs> you make your way upstairs. Uh, on the door, it says Mayor Charles Pennyworthen. Yeah, Pennyworthen. Charles Pennyworthen. Okay. You knock um i just opened the door okay all right so you, you see the mayor he's a older gentleman a human gray hair gray mutton chops yeah and a monocle <laughs> now he's wearing like a like a nice shirt and a vest and whatnot you know he's cleaned up and whatnot yeah and he's like writing on some of the desk and he hears you walking he's like could i help you uh yeah sir um i'd, I'd like some more information about this potential but this job listing that was posted. Oh, yes, the job listing. Please come in, come in. And as you squeeze your way through the door, he's like, oh. <laughs> uh, please have a, a seat. And he kind of gestures towards a like a, a lounge couch, basically. Oh, there, there are other chairs, but I don't think you'll fit in them with your nine <laughs> foot ass. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a little kid trying to get into those little tiny plastic. Exactly. Or, or it's like a grown man trying to get into one of those little tiny plastic exactly. chairs. And it's he's like, oh. getting up and it's like still stuck to your butt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Salazar sits down then. Welcome, welcome to our our fine town of uh, Port of Saint Royal. My name is uh, Mayor Charles Pennyworthen at your service, sir. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you for answering our call for help here. Well, call for help might be a bit dramatic, but uh, you per might or may or may not have perhaps heard of a, a local. Mm, religious group shall we say that uh inhabits our town here a uh, group of folks that go by the name of cult of the crab cult of the crab cult of the crab is their name yes uh see they're a group of locals that have taken to worshiping uh a deity that takes the form of a giant crab from what i understand uh, a relatively recent addition to our fine town they only sprang up in the in the past few years or so and, well, rumor around town is that, that they uh, they don't take kindly to the, the crabbing industry here in, in our our fine town of Port Royal. Isn't that how you guys make a majority of your 
your money? Indeed it is, yes. The, the industry popped up suddenly about 10 or so years ago, and uh, things have been booming ever since. Uh, you might have noticed the, the new construction as you enter town and whatnot. It's been quite good for our town. Yes, I have, and uh, I also noticed that there, there's only one there's only one bar in town, and uh, I guess m- my question is why. Oh well, like I said, we're we're expanding. There, I'm sure there will be more bars and taverns and whatnot. There's actually two here in the uh, the town. There's the one you saw, and then there's one that I've actually set up accommodations for you as well, called uh, Bony Bill's Bed and Breakfast. Bony Bill's Bed and Breakfast. Yes. Well, we'll get to that more later. Um, for now. So, some rumors are going around that the cult might try something funny uh, this this upcoming crab festival here. Now, personally, I don't pay much ru- much to these rumors here. As I said, they're mostly just rumors. You know, old sailor talk and whatnot, and uh, the d- late nights in the bar kind of thing. The the cult themselves are members of the community. Like I said, they they've never done anything untoward towards anybody. They're perfectly pleasant. In fact, you. You look outside our window now, you'll probably see a, a small group of them passing out flyers for their cult in the town square there. And, like I said, they're perfectly peaceful, but uh, the rumors going around that uh, maybe they don't take kindly to the festival and whatnot. So, now, what, what did, sorry to cut you off, Mr. Penny... Pennyworthen. Pennyworthen. <laughs> Charles is fine. Too. Charles. Yes. So, Charles, I guess my question is, is what... What did what does this cult believe in necessarily? Like, is there something, is there something strange that they believe in on top of, uh, aside from them worshiping? To be honest, crabs? I've never paid them much attention myself. You know, what with working here at town hall and whatnot, so they've never disrupted anything, so I've never paid them much mind. Uh, some, like I said, some kind of giant crab. I don't know specific details. Uh, you're more than welcome to talk to the cult themselves. They're very friendly people. So. Okay. So how, I guess my question is, uh, yes. following up this, how much do I get paid for all this? Because i got to know if this is even worth my time. Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot about that part? Oh it's a job listing. Word. It's a job <laughs> listing, dog. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Just come up with some type of arbitrary number. The, the job itself pays 100 gold coins total. Plus, like I said, we have accommodations for you at mm. Bony Bill's Bed and Breakfast. Mr. Charles Penny Bottom, or whatever the hell Penny your name Worthen, is. Yes. Penny Worth. And it sounds like you kind of just wrote the job listing and then tried to see the first sucker that would come in here and then offer them 100 gold coins. So this is what I'm going to do. I'll do it for 150 coins. And I want a barrel of rum. 125 and a half barrel of rum. 124. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me put that in my uh, sea turtle notebook here. Uh, 124 <laughs> and a half barrel of rum. And a half barrel of rum. So, I'm going to get that full that full barrel of rum. You be- Believe you me. Would, All the rum will be mine. 24 plus half barrel of rum. Okay. Well, so with that taken care of, uh, let me just look at my other notes here. So yes, I would, I would stop. I would recommend by perhaps maybe talking to the local cult there. Like I said, that they're, they're perfectly peaceful people. Uh, I don't suspect anything untoward is going to happen, but just in case, you know, just to set some of the minds at ease here at City Hall and whatnot, that's why we're hiring you. So walk around town, talk with the people, put your ear to the ground, and meet back here later. Okay. And then, uh, you, you, don't, you don't have any, uh, you don't care that I'm a dragonborn? You don't care that... Uh, I, I've been I've been through a lot of towns and uh, a lot of people don't look too kindly about dragonborn people working for them. Whatever. Like. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, equal opportunity lender. You know, I don't I don't know. I no, that's just, I understand. You certainly, yeah, some islands here in the Ben Isles are not as welcoming as others, but 
for the most part, we don't give a shit about other people's races. Like, <laughs> wait till you meet Bony Bill. Like, oh no, the Bony Bill. Trust me, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> uh, okay, so I guess I want to go try and talk to some of the cult members now. Okay, so you literally just step outside of the city hall and you see like a group of like maybe half dozen people. Yeah. Um, each of them are wearing some style of robe but you notice they're all kind of mixed mismatched you see some people are wearing like kind of like a like a japanese style kimono kind of robe you see other people are wearing like lo- looks like a wizard's robe of some kind yeah one guy's just straight up wearing a bathrobe <laughs> yeah um and you notice they're all wearing what kind of look like uh oven mitts but instead of being rounded they actually come to a, a point like a crab's claw almost. oh wow and then on the Somewhere on their robes is a, what looks like kind of a really rough shape of a crab. And you see them like, oh, please come join us for our service. And they're handing out flyers, but they, you know, they're wearing fucking mittens, so they like spill half of them <laughs> as they're handing it out. Like, hey, here you go. And they hand them like a half crumpled one. It's like, hey, come, come visit us. Yeah. Well, oh my God. Everyone and everyone, anyone and everyone is welcome here. Yeah, come visit the cult. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like I said, I, I hope you weren't expecting this to be super serious. <laughs> so, so I guess I want to speak to whoever like the main, like, kind of person in this area is the main cult um, member in this area. I guess you'll talk to the guy in the bathroom then, because that's funny to me. Okay. So you, you walk up to the guy in the bathroom. He's like, ah, hello, oh, hello, hello up there. <laughs> Welcome to the port of port of Saint Royal. Can I offer you a flyer? And he hands you a half crumpled one. I in my mind, in my mind, all he sees it's like almost like an anime where it's like you see that his eyes are like white. You know what I mean? And it's just like this tall, huge, foreboding <laughs> thing. And there's just like drag. You just see like the breath. Like, <laughs> <It's> just <laughs> uh, <laughs> hello. W- would you Would you like to hear about our Lord and Savior, the Mighty Crab? Sure. <laughs> Oh, fabulous. Half crumpled flyer and whatnot. And it, it looks like like somebody just whole whole fist just drew a like a shitty picture of a crab. And then at the top it just says K R A B, but the B is backwards. Oh my gosh. So crab. <laughs> like it they wear these mittens all the time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh no! Like, uh, yeah, we're we're holding a service um, tomorrow. Actually, if you'd like to come and visit us at our 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 sanctuary of the crab. Um. Yeah. Sure. I'll I'll do that. I'm. I guess I'm just wondering. Um. You know, what what is your uh? What's your group? What's your group all about? Oh uh, well. See, we are we are dedicated to the being called the mighty crab. The mighty if, crab. If you have a moment, I'll I'll tell you the the story that started our religion here. Sure. Ah, fabulous. Don't mind the Samsung phone that I'm holding to reference the story so I don't miss any beats. <laughs> so, <laughs> a, as the story goes, many eons ago when the universe was young and new, it is said that there were so many stars that filled the sky with light and there was no darkness. Amongst the stars lived great and terrible creatures, immense in size and vast in knowledge. One such creature was a serpent with many necks and many heads. When a neck stretched out, a head would open its jaws and swallow a star whole. The serpent devoured many stars, yet its hunger would not cease. With each star devoured, the light of the stars dimmed and darkness crept in. Disturbed by this, another of the great creatures, a being known as the Mighty Crab, challenged the many-headed serpent to a duel. If the crab won, then the serpent would cease its endless feasting of the stars. But if the serpent won, then it could feed on the crab's body until it was satiated. The serpent accepted and bit down on the crab's body with its many heads. But the crab shell was hard and tough, and the serpent's teeth could not pierce it. As the serpent struggled, the crab used its powerful claws to cut the head clean off of their necks. The battle raged on for untold centuries and it is said there was so much blood gushing from the serpent's many necks that it extinguished even more stars and gave the darkness its inky black color. Finally, the many-headed serpent had been reduced but a single head left, but the crab's strength was failing, 
but it only had enough energy for one last strike. As the final head bit down on the crab, the crab thrust out not towards the serpent's neck, but the belly of the serpent. As the claw sliced the belly open, a blinding light poured from out from inside, as the, all the stars previously devoured had been molded into one giant star. As the serpent lay dying, the crab looked upon the new star and felt its warmth, becoming unbearably sleepy. The mighty crab receded into itself, pulling its legs and claws in close and forming a solid shell around itself, and fell into a deep sleep. The new star then began circling around the crab, bringing its, warmth, its warm light to every part of the crab's sleeping form. As the ages passed, mortal creatures began to take form amongst the now dark and starry sky. Fearful of the other great beings that lurked in the darkness, these early mortals fled to the safety of the crab's sleeping form, settling amongst the curvature of, <coughs> excuse me, of its armor. When no creature dared venture to, f dared to venture for fear of waking the crab and feeling its pinching claws on their necks next. And that is the story that founded our religion. Our, our faith believes that the mighty crab is a protector and a savior of all mortal beings in, in this world. We inhabit its very shell anywhere you see here in the world. The very ground you walk is the crab itself. And we, we, we honor the crab with our, our dedicated worship and our, you know, laws. So, yes. my first question. Yes. Do you guys know how batshit crazy you are? Yes. Okay. Um. Wh when is this event again? When am I? What's? Oh, we'll be holding a service tomorrow, and uh, just go down to the shoreline there. It kind of points towards the the ocean there. Just follow it down all the way to the cave. You'll it, it's a basically a straight shot. You'll find it easy. Um. Okay. Can I go there now? Oh, I'm afraid no. We, we've closed the sanctuary down today for cleaning in preparation for the ceremony tomorrow. Okay. Um, well, I'm just going to go to the bar then. Um, thank you for your the history lesson. I appreciate it, sir. Of course. Sir. And what's your name? I am Jerry. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. Yes, of course. And what is your name, good sir? Uh, Salazar. Salazar, well, I hope to see you at the ceremony tomorrow, Salazar. Have a great day. You have a great day, too. <laughs> and, and then you see all the other calls like, bye, crab. <laughs> so now, now this is going to be Salazar in, inner mo monologuing inner with monologue. himself. Okay. So these guys are freaking nuts. Um, but maybe, maybe I should go to the sanctuary while it's being cleaned today and try and get some more information or at the very least try to see if I, there's anyone around the sanctuary I could try to talk to. Or <laughs> okay. So I want to go to try and go to the sanctuary right now. Uh, so you make your way down the shoreline and you can see kind of in the distance and there's like a cliff face and that's probably where the cave is. Make your way down the shore and you see um, what looks to be the entrance of a cave, but it's been boarded up with a uh, very ramshackle looking wall. It looks like they kind of just collect like, bits of driftwood and you know, the odd bit of scrap wood that they could find there and just kind of haphazardly nailed it together to a wall. Yeah. And in front of it, you see another uh, cult member dressed in similar things, shabby robes. He's got his mittens on. And he sees you approaching. He's like, ah, crab. Um, I do the same hand gesture like the crab people. Ah, crab. Um, and so I want to go up to him and be like um i heard about your religion and i w would like to become a member ah crab so what what do i have to do to become a member ah crab um so i want to roll to knock this guy out okay <laughs> 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 <Okay. laughs> Going right into it. Uh, let me see if I can find the quick base stat thing. There's gotta be like. I nor like oh, I was gonna wait till I got into any shenanigans, but this guy is like kind of pissing me off. Prayer. So I'm I'm gonna. I, I, what I want to do is I want to just hit him just hard enough where I hit him on the top of the head, and it's kind of like Andre, you know, in uh, Princess Bride. Oh, just kind of like hammer fist, just bonk. 
on the top of his head and he just okay. fa falls uh, to the ground. Okay, let me see. Oh, by the way, hey, look, my, my tea's in a little barrel. Ah, barrel. A little barrel. I do enjoy cups that are shaped like that. Okay, so got some uh, some thingamabobs here. So roll me just a, a regular <coughs> attack roll. So you're going to take your d20, and you're going to add your, I think for you it's going to be your dexterity modifier. Which plus, is which is two? With, which will be plus two, and I think you also add your proficiency bonus because you are a monk, and this is kind of what you guys do. So plus two, so four, plus four? Yeah, so whatever you roll on the, uh, the thing there. You oh. add plus two to that. So 11 plus four, so I got 15. 15. Ooh, yeah, you bonked him real good. Bonked him real good. Bonked him real good. And for flavor purposes, we'll say, yeah, you just kind of, Andre the Giant, bonk, and he just kind of, ooh, crap, and falls face down to the sand. Um. Okay. So now I'm like kind of like scrambling. I'm like, oh, gosh. Uh, What do there, I do there, with the There's no like crate or barrel or anything. You just stuff him in there. It's just cliff wall. Wooden door itself. Um, can I bury and, him, but like put like a, to take like like a straw or something to like leave so he can still breathe? Roll me an investigation to see if there's like a straw esque thing you could use. Uh, I got a nine. Nine. Um, you see what kind of look like cattails, kind of just a little bit, a little bit further up on the shore there. Don't know if they're hollow or not, but. Maybe. Okay, I want to investigate these cattails to see if I I because I, I don't want to kill him. I just want to bonk him so I can investigate this hideout. I mean, he he is he is sufficiently knocked out. So. Um. Yeah. yeah so, what do, are the are the cat? I are the cattails hollow? I actually don't know for sure. <laughs> I don't know. I'll just, how let's just works. say. Let's just say that I think they are hollow. If I'm not mistaken. I wouldn't be surprised. But. Yeah, sure. You, you so, got someone you, in the comments is gonna be like, yeah, no, I, no, no, they, they no, are, they are just, not hollow. <laughs> you just straight up killed a guy. Like. <laughs> <laughs> you killed a guy, and then you shoved a bunch of cattails in his mouth and yeah. buried him in the sand. <laughs> sure. Um, roll me a medicine to like bury him in such a way that he won't just suffocate on sand. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. You did this to yourself uh, 20 dog okay is it a natural 20 yes all right so yeah you 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 like use like one of your 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 dragon claws you like kind of whittle the uh gently whittle the cattail <laughs> to like a perfect little like modern day drinking straw you kind of stick it in his mouth and then you bury him ever so carefully so that it just in case you didn't block his nose and you got his mouth there but also like should the tide come in or something he'll be able to breathe yeah and whatnot and <laughs> Just for the sake of this character, because he actually does have a name. It's Gary. It's written on his, his robe. Oh, damn. Was I hope he wasn't supposed to be something. I mean, he was literally just a guy that just said crab. Well, that's what I thought. I was like, okay. He, he's yeah. not like anything that's going to yeah, he, amount to much. He, but. He's just going to make funny faces and say the word crab. So, yeah, that's Gary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so yeah, uh, you have successfully buried Gary uh, to where he won't die. Um, I want to... Try and scale. How, wait, how tall is the building? Um, it's God, you're nine feet tall, right? I was gonna say, oh, it's like ten feet, ten feet up in the air. So like, <laughs> yeah, it's like a foot taller than you. <laughs> I for some reason, when you were talking about the call of the crab, or when you're talking about their hideout, I thought you were like gonna say that it was like some type of like taller, like three or four no, story. No, it, it's building. like a natural cave that they just kind of made their sanctuary in <laughs> like okay so. yeah that, that actually makes more sense yeah. yeah these guys these guys are running around wearing crab claws crab, and crab mittens <laughs> just because you know they were a giant crab so they got they got oh crab my mittens. gosh <laughs> so i was really happy with myself when i made that up I'm like oh wouldn't it be funny if the cult of the crab they're like <laughs> they got little crab claws <laughs> oh my gosh so oh my god i, I want to I guess just go in the front door. He's going in the front door? Yeah. Right. Uh, I, it is locked. So I want to roll to smash the door. Or you just smash it open? Yeah. Okay. I, I I would try to, you know, lock pick it, but I don't think I have the... I mean, it's always worth a shot. You did just roll a nat 20 on a medicine, which I think they use wisdom, so you're not, like, totally helpless. 
you can use any skill you see on that sheet. It's just it's a matter of well, how much of a bonus you're getting to it. Is there a lock? What would go with lock pick? That'd be sleight of hand. Sleight of hand. Yeah, I think that's a dexterity based roll there. Okay. Actually, yeah, you'd probably be. Oh, I have, to, I have a modifier of two for that. Yeah, that's that's one of your better skills. So okay, I'll, I'll try to lock pick it so I'm not like it. just okay. busting the freaking door down. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Eight. Eight. Eight yeah. plus. Fortunately, no, you're not able to, to jiggle it open. Damn it. Yeah, I feel like Salazar is not really a character that would be able to. Like his his hands are really big, so I just imagine him like trying to grasp. Like, oh, yeah. I, what's something I can grasp? He, he can let a little screwdriver and a bobby pin like and fall out. Just kind of like, <laughs> eh, come on, come on, come on, and then you, ex- just, ex- you break both of them. <laughs> except like if this is like the normal size, it'd be like two little toothpicks. So yeah, he's like, yeah. <laughs> come on, and then you break both of your tools, and you're like, ah, crap. <laughs> Throw him over towards Gary or whatever. <laughs> um, you hear Gary kind of mumbling something. Er, prayer. <laughs> <laughs> That's even what he dreams about. It just for some reason, for some reason, Gary reminds me of like Timmy from South Park. Krabby, Krabby, Krabby. Um. So yeah, I guess you know. I'm just going to say F it and break the door down. All right. Um, roll me just a basic attack roll. You like kicking that door. I'm going to kick the crap out of this door. 12. Um, yeah, but you, you do break... I add anything to that? or? I know. You, you do You like your, your dex and your uh, proficiency modifier, so you're getting a plus four to that. Cool. So that's what, 16? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. It's not a bad roll. So, yeah, I'm going to say you you kick in the door and you take, like, half the wall with it. It's, it's not exactly a OSHA-approved wall there. So, <laughs> so yeah, half the wall just kind of goes yeah, into the cave and whatnot. So do you I, have made yourself known. <laughs> do I see anyone in the cave right now? Uh, initially, no. Your eyes kind of get – it's, like, middle of the day. So yeah. The sun's out and whatnot, and it's – Kind of a dark cave. You do see kind of like light glowing further inside the cave, but the immediate area inside the cave, it's, you got to let your eyes adjust a little bit there. Okay. So uh, I guess I guess I go forward. I have I have that. Uh, can I can I use one of my um one of my torches from my explorer's pack? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So yeah, you you pop out a torch, pop out your tinder box, and. Did you, did you use your, your fingers like that because it's so tiny to Cause, him? Because you're nine feet tall, <laughs> yes. I I forgot about that fact, so there's going to be a lot of like weird size scaling to this. How how foreboding would that be to have like a nine-foot-tall lizard man just bas- towering over you? That's basically the size of like a young dragon. <laughs> like, <laughs> like some of the most powerful creatures... You stand like at eye level to them. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I just like when when I was reading initially the thing, mm-hmm. like how how tall dragonborns are. They're tall. Don't get me wrong. Like they're like they, s- they're six and a half feet normally. Yeah, yeah. But like I just thought it'd be funny to like. For, no, it, it's it's hilarious. To be like, nine feet tall. You know, <laughs> this is gonna be funny. Like I'm probably gonna have to have you like do like dex rolls or something to get through a freaking door just to. <laughs> Squeeze yourself in without collapsing the wall. Well, well, one of the when me and Ben were on the phone yesterday, like making this um, character stats up. Oh yeah. Uh, we were talking about what he should take, and one of them, like that, I could take was stealth. And I was like, it would not make. I mean, it would be beneficial if I took stealth for how big I am and stuff, but it just would not make it, any sense for the character it would at also all. Be just freaking hilarious. You're like sitting in like a nobleman's like living room or something. Like, oh, we gotta hide. So you hide behind like a lamp. And there's just like your nine foot tall self, just kind of like squeezed behind, just like a lamp the size of the the microphone stand here, just like. Oh my gosh. That, that's kind of the tone I like. <laughs> just the kind I have the lampshade on my head. No, I like I am the lamp now, and the, the lamp is like like four times the height that it was. You're wearing the lampshade, but you're holding a candle in front of it, so like there's just wax dripping on the floor. Like, yeah, this will work. <laughs> My luck is at a ten as well. Heck yeah. Um, so, okay, so. so so you walk in um, with your torch illuminating that initial hallway. You don't see like any other guards or anything like that. Um, as you're walking in, you kind of hear like a and you see a, a guy in there kind of sweeping. He's like, 
Oh, hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, I, I assume the wall is uh, not there anymore. Uh, I tell him that I'm an independent contractor that was sent to fix the door. Um, oh, excellent timing. <laughs> uh, so you know, is uh, I was just wondering, like, um, and then I attack him. <laughs> oh. Uh no 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 okay I'm not gonna attack him I'm not gonna attack him I'm 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 trying to think that's, smart if you want to attack him that's fine well I want to attack him I really do but I also want to like get a little bit of information out of this guy okay so um Let's see where I'm gonna put this guy's name here I have a name for him can uh is there any way that I can like roll to intimidate him to you do have an intimidation skill you can roll for what where is it on the sheet um. Somewhere in your skills list there. I don't remember exactly where it is, but it, it'll just say intimidation. Oh, intimidation is based on charisma? Yes. So my charisma is, I have a modifier of plus zero. Plus zero. All right, so it'll be just a straight D20 roll there. Okay. So, so you, you want to, like, intimidate him to... Uh, to see, I want to I want to intimidate him, and I, I want to see, like, I want to ask him what he knows about um, an upcoming attack. On the, for the like on the festival oh, okay. that's coming up. All right, so go ahead, roll me a d twenty. Ten. Ah. So, ah. so when you 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 kind of like roar and like tell me your secrets, human. And he's like ah, please don't eat me. I I don't know of any kind of attack or anything like that. I I I'm just a humble cult leader. Please don't hurt me. Um, you're so you're the leader. Yes, my my name is Barnabas Kane. I. I started this humble cult, religion, whatever you want to call it, please. Well, listen, Barnabas. Ah! I want to know why I'm hearing through my circles, through little birdies talking around town, why they're saying that your cult is is going to attack the festival, okay? Because I, I got a lot of money riding on this. 124 gold pieces and half a barrel of rum. But you know what? I'm going to make it a full barrel because I do such a good job. Please, sir. Uh, we ha the, the cult has no intention of harming anybody. We we merely wish to spread the word of our Lord and Savior, the mighty crab. I, I swear it. Then 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 why am I hearing these things? I I, I I can't account for rumors and whatnot. I mean, sure, our our humble cult is a little strange compared to most people, but I assure you we have only the most honest of intentions. Sir, let me show you something. Uh, I want to roll to shoot my dragon. I want to roll to shoot my dragon uh, electricity beam through where the door was. Uh, and you won't have to roll that because you're not making any kind of attack or anything like that. So oh. you just... And lightning just strikes through the cave and shoots out and whatnot. Hopefully that doesn't hit anybody. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it doesn't kill Gary or Jerry, whatever the hell his name is. It's just <laughs> sleeping underneath in the sand. Crab! Crab! Crab. <laughs> Crab. He kind of... Tries to roll over, but he's buried, so he kind of stays in place. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Please, sir. We, I assure you, we have no ill intentions. We. I can do that with my, my with my breath, okay, sir? I'm not messing around. I, I'm well aware of how dragonborns can use breath weapons. I, I'm, you're not the first. I'm, you are the tallest, but you're not the first. Let's just say I believe you that you guys don't intend to do this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take away from the fact that I'm going to drag you along with me until I figure out and get to the bottom of this. <laughs> And get my 124 gold pieces. What do you mean, drag me? Uh, I think I think I meant what I said. Now, either you can come with me willingly, or I can break your arms but... and stuff and stuff you and stuff you in my backpack like C-3PO in The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, sir, you're breaking the fourth wall. We can't do that. <laughs> How do you even know what the fourth wall is? I talked to giant crabs, all right, my guy. I know what the fourth wall is. <laughs> okay, so can I can I take this guy with me? Do I have to roll for it? Do um, I have to? I I know it's a kind of a weird request. It is, yeah. <laughs> we 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 can go a different route if you want. I no, just... no, no. It's fine. I'm I'm interested to see how this will play out. So, roll me, roll me just another attack roll to just kind of like pick him up, basically. Okay. Slightly different. Twenty. Nat twenty? Yep. Oh yeah, you grab him. I'm not even gonna try and look for another thing. So yeah. <laughs> just you, like just like kinda like just 
pick him up at, by his head and just kind of stuff him into your bag. I, when you say that, it's like I imagine like a claw machine. Like yeah, my yeah, hands yeah. like a claw machine and just like. <laughs> but as, as you're lifting it up, it kind of like hits the top of the rack too hard and then the prize flips out. So he just kind of lands on his face. Give it! <laughs> No, you you successfully pick him up and stuff him into your oversized backpack. <laughs> like, sir, please don't don't do this. There's a sermon tomorrow. I must be there for <laughs> as you close the the lid. I just kidnap him. Yeah, you you yeah. Oh my you gosh. That. Okay, so I've already committed. I I might as well continue. Is this does this follow? Uh, because I my plan was to be chaotic good. <laughs> Is this? chaotic good or is this following a different type of path this probably leans a little bit more to evil but it's not like you didn't just walk in and like start murdering people like you you had the intent of like oh we're just gonna knock him unconscious where yeah. I, I would think like a chaotic evil would have just been like oh hello stab in the neck yeah, yeah. You, you wouldn't have bothered like trying to like you, you bonked <laughs> gary on the head but like the intent was to just kind of give him out of the way yeah in the easiest fastest way possible yeah I, i'd still probably call that chaotic good because like you're not intending to murder anybody, at least not yet. <laughs> yeah, not until I get messed with, or until uh, my, my man's doesn't pay up with my uh, 124 gold pieces. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Oh God, <laughs> I don't know what that was. That was a uh, a little scary, but we'll we'll see what happens. Um, All right. So you you now you now have uh, the cult leader Barnabas Kane just stuffed into your bag there like a chihuahua in a. Can, in a purse. Can I still hear him? Like, can I still talk to him? You can still hear him. He kind of muffles, like, rrr, 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 and he's kind of like fumbling in the bag. You can feel him kind of like squirming around, but it's kind of hard to make him out well, with all your, your equipment and whatnot are stuffed in there, too. <laughs> Just all jostle, jostle it around in mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess I want to I wanna look around. Uh, I want to investigate the the area inside of this so i won't have you make a roll just yet so the the cave itself is it's a natural formed cave you know you um in the center of the cave you see uh like a natural skylight uh glowing down onto a statue probably about as tall as you are here yeah of a a giant crab also made similar to the uh the the wall slash door just made of like driftwood and scrap wood and whatnot of a crab just kind of like arms spread and like ah and in front of it, you see, like, half-melted candles and the odd incense stick here and there. Yeah. There's nothing immediately apparent. Like, it's a pretty pretty normal cave, you know. You've seen one just like it, maybe not with a crab in it, but, yeah, you know, nothing fancy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. I guess I want to ask Jerry, is there any hidden – or Jerry, what the hell is his name? Barnabas. Barnabas, sorry. Barnabas Kane. Barnabas Kane. That's a good name. Yeah. Uh, Barnabas, is there any hidden passages in here? Uh, can I, like, lift the top yes. of the bag <laughs> so I can at least hear him? Yes. I, sir, this is a natural formed cave. I was led here by our guard. The, the, there's no secret entrance aside from the one you just walked through. I mean, there's a small alcove where I, I stay in, you know, here in the cave and whatnot. But, like, the, why do I feel like this is a setup? I feel like I feel like I'm gonna end up messing with these people a lot, and it's just gonna make me look like an a hole. Who knows? Like, all right, all right. Sky's the limit at this point. So, uh, I guess we'll figure out how bad I've messed the situation up. I'm getting my 124 gold pieces, no matter what happens. And sure. you, you better believe that. That's a promise. It's a promise. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a threat, but whatever. It can't, why? Why can't it be both? I mean, sure, it can be both, but like. So okay, it's been nothing but friendly to you. <laughs> so uh, we camera three is not working. Oh okay, I've been going between camera one and two. All right, whatever. Bro- breaking the fourth wall again. Um, what was I gonna say? So I guess I'll leave the cave because there's nothing to really see here. Okay. Can, do I need? Can I roll to investigate? Yeah, go ahead and investigate. Yeah, I got a 16. The whole idea of the dice tower. Should, that, should I roll did, again? No, it's fine. You, you got a what, a 60? Yeah. yeah. The, the only time I'll say to re-roll is if it lands on the floor or something, we're going to like go scrambling around for it. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. All right. But, like, the whole idea of the dice tower was that you didn't throw your dice across all the, the desks I know. and the equipment and whatnot. I know. I'm sorry. 
Anyway, what was it? Sixteen. Yeah. Uh, plus your modifiers. Uh, well, so the proficiency think, bonus is twelve, but then what? What goes with uh? I think uh, so. Investigation is intelligence. Yeah. So I have a plus zero, so it's just plus, plus two. Okay. okay. So are you proficient with investigation? No. Okay. So you just just straight dice roll. So proficiency is so. Remember, we had you check off some certain skills and whatnot. Those would be the skills that you add your proficiency bonus to. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. that makes more that makes more sense. It's it's a little confusing. Just so everybody knows, I've never played the real version of this game. That's a good point too. We didn't uh, mention that. Yeah. The way that me and Ben always used to do it when we played together is just rolling, uh, just the yeah, just twenty throwing dice at each other. Yeah, basically. That's just all just just talking to each other. You know, yeah. making we're, stories. We're doing like official D and D with t- just the two of us. Yeah. <laughs> all right, two dudes hanging out in the room. The the dude that's play a crew. Both wearing pants. Finally. <laughs> we have we had to put pants on today to come to the studio. I had to put on pants to go to work, so Oh I know. So that's the only bad part about work is having to put on pants. Fucking clothes and shit. Anyway. I'm I'm a person that likes flip flops a lot. Oh yeah. So can't, can't be wearing those. No, well especially in a factory. Like mm. they uh I got yelled at one day because I was wearing flip yeah, flip flops. They're yeah. like, dude, what are you doing? We could like run your foot over. Like, you could get like a nail in your foot. Yeah. You got to wear boots or something. I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So you're investigating the cave. So you got a twelve. And there's, like you said, there's not really much to see there. You do notice, kind of towards the back of the cave, is a, a small little alcove and whatnot. It's got like a tiny little cot in it. Um, a little tiny little desk and whatnot. Some odd papers here and there. But that's really about it for this cave. There's not a particularly big, like, expansive cave system or something can, like that like you've seen before. Can I look more? This will probably be the last thing I do in here, but can I look more in? I want to investigate the desk. Yeah, sure. So you, you're kind of shuffling through the desk. Um, he's got, like, you know, different speeches kind of prepped out and whatnot. You know, he he does actively lead this cult and whatnot. So these appear to be, like, his different sermons that he'll give um, throughout the year and whatnot. Like, oh, it's the cult's version of Christmas. We'll use this sermon versus... Yeah. This version of Easter, we'll use that sermon kind of thing. Nothing seemingly heinous by nature, just like, hey, the crab likes to protect us and whatnot. That's pretty cool. Kind of the gist of it. Gotcha. Yeah. Um. So, man, I feel like I've messed up here. Uh, is there any chance of me being able to knock him out so that he doesn't remember this interaction, or he will for sure remember this interaction? Mm, you don't have any particular like skills, or skill, anything. or ability, or spell that would modify his memory. <sighs> Crap! And like, in reality, like hitting somebody that hard that they get like amnesia, like causes serious brain damage. So, um, yeah. I mean, you can try talking to him smooth it over <laughs> like hey this was a misunderstanding can i buy you dinner or something um something I, like that. I ask him if i can uh, by the way uh, one of my character flaws is that my character is suffers from alcoholism oh, okay. and that's going to tie into some stuff that we uh we're talking about mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. my character progression in the future mm-hmm. um but i guess i guess i want to ask him like Hey, like this is all just a big misunderstanding. Is it okay if uh can I take you out for a drink or something, man? Roll me a persuasion. Let <laughs> me just try to smooth it over after I broke your freaking the door down and your your cold like, house. I'm uh, I'm for you. This house. is gonna be a difficult one here because like <laughs> had this happened in real life, you would have called the police. Nineteen. Nineteen. Well dang. <laughs> And 19, dog. <laughs> All right. So I, I assume you, you, like, you like pull him out of the backpack and, like, hey. <laughs> um, well, I I mean, the crab teaches forgiveness, so I, I, I do forgive you, my tall friend. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe take a rain check on the drink, though. I, I suppose we can... Let this slide over, but next time, perhaps just use the, well, I guess using the door might be a bit difficult, but maybe just knock first. Okay. 
that that that'll work. Um, so we're, we're cool. We're friends. I suppose so. Hello. If at any point you felt you needed to confess your sins, your boy. That's okay. I don't worship giant crabs, but uh. Oh, you should try it. It's real fun. Y- yeah, I'm. I'm sure. Um, I'm gonna get going though. Okay. Very well. I. I do kind of hope we see each other in the future. Perhaps under more peaceful circumstances. I'll, um, maybe you'll see me at the, um, what, what was it that they had, that they're having at their cult? Like a ceremony. Maybe I'll see you at the ceremony. Is it the, tomorrow? The, the next day, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe I'll see you at your ceremony tomorrow. Very well, then. I shall, I shall see you then, good sir. Peace. <laughs> He like tries to mimic you, but he is a crab claw. <laughs> he's like, he's like, he tries like, to like. Uh, peace, peace be with you, sir. <laughs> um. So, <laughs> so, I guess I want to go back. I'm considering just like telling, telling the the mayor like I think they're fine. I don't think there's an attack. If there's an attack, maybe it's coming from someone that's trying to blame it on these. Crazy cult people. Okay. So you, you make your way back to City Hall, and the secretary's like, oh, hello again. Is that the voice I was using? Yeah, sure. And you just go on up, sir, and you squeeze your way through the door, and uh, <laughs> Mayor Charles Pennyworth is like, so how did it go? Uh, It went it went pretty good. Um, You know, I got information the peaceful way. Uh, Didn't do any type of destruction. Or anything, you know, it's hard to believe because I'm a giant, nine foot tall lizard man. But um, yeah, yeah, it was uh, enlightening. Uh, hmm. They're freaking crazy. Yeah, they are bad, a strange lot. Yes, bad shit, crazy. But um, yeah, I think they're all good. So I would like my 124 gold pieces now. But I also would like to tell you that there's also potential that maybe someone's trying to set these people up. Which leads into. My next request from you, sir. Would it be perhaps be possible for you to stay till the end of the week, just until the festival itself is over and all this rumor nonsense blows over? Um, yes, but it depends how much you're willing to pay me after the 124. And I want the full barrel of rum. The full barrel. Uh, how about an extra 50 gold and we'll toss in the other half of the barrel? You got yourself a deal. Fabulous. Uh, on the, the mention of rumors, um, another one has come across my desk. Uh, people are saying, we so we keep the supplies for our uh, festival, you know, the banners and the fireworks and whatnot, in a little warehouse just uh, down by the docks there. Would it be possible to have you maybe just watch over the warehouse tonight? Again, rumors of, you know, unscrupulous fellows perhaps... Plotting something not so neighborly. Wait, is to is tonight the ceremony for the? Oh, no. that's the next day. Yeah, that, that'll be the next day. And then when is the when is the parade? The the festival and whatnot will be like, it's like Monday today. It'll be like probably like Saturday. Okay. So there's plenty of time. Yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. Um. I'm willing to. I'm willing to do that. Oh, splendid. Well, since it will be a late night operation, perhaps you'd like to. Maybe take a nap for the afternoon at uh, Boney Bill's Bread and Bed and Breakfast. Boney Bill's? Boney Bill's Bed and Breakfast. The finest establishment in all the town, I assure you, sir. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, as long as... Did you guys cop me the room? Or do I have Yes, to... we, we, have, we have a room and whatnot reserved for the rest of the week here until the job it's in its entirety is finished and whatnot. And Boney Bill will take care of your food and board needs. Okay. Yeah. Um. I guess I'm. I'm gonna make my way over to, to Boney Bills and um. Maybe try and get some rest. Have, a, have a beer or something. So to get to Boney Bills, uh, let me pull up the directions here real quick. Uh, here we are. So to get to Boney Bills, uh, when you exit the uh city hall here, immediately turn right. Follow the road there till you reach First Street, right? Oh, hello. Thank you for watching this episode. If you'd like to see more, you can find the full series unedited at the Dude Let's Play It YouTube channel 
or at the ONTV YouTube channel. I hope to see you there.